tribe, welcome to the HGDC, HG Designs Crochet channel. I'm Heather, your host, and I'm 28 and I live in the United Kingdom. This is my channel all about crochet, knitting, a yarny life, and lots of happy making. So if you are new, thank you for joining us all. And if you are returning, thank you for coming back. It's so nice to see you and spend this time with you. Um, we are approaching 500 subscribers, which is crazy. The tribe is growing and I'm so proud and I'm so happy. So thank you so much for everybody that has clicked subscribe down below. Um, you can find me on social media. I am on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, and Patreon. And Ravelry and all the links are below in the drop down. Um, my tag is at HD Designs Crochet for everything apart from Twitter, which is at HD Designs Crow C R O because it isn't long enough. Okay, so oh, and as well, I need to show you I got new business cards. If you're on my Patreon, you have already seen a little clip of this. Um, but there's things going on in the background here at HGDC um, and I finally got around to updating my business cards. So it's got the same logo which was designed by Jane Boyd and I'll put her tag on the screen and then I've changed the back so it's nice and simple. Um, it's just white with the black icons so I've got YouTube, Facebook, Etsy, Instagram, Twitter and Patreon and my tag on there. Um, so I feel a little bit more legit and real right now. What do you think to them? I've chose to go for something really um, simple black and white pared down because when it's attached to any of my work my work is crazy it's bright and this just this just does what it needs to do. So, as I said, you've already seen them if you're on my Patreon. Um, I've probably already put an update on Patreon as well as, as to where some of those are going. Um, if you are on my Patreon, then you do get updates ahead of YouTube time. So, today is um, Bank Holiday August, and this won't go out until a week later. So if you're on Patreon, you're getting real-time snippets and updates of what's going on in HGDC. Um, so if you want to be part of the tribe in that way, go sign up and you will get up-to-date, on-the-point, on-the-beat information. I'm also going to say I'm sat further away to try hide my spots, but actually the light's just making me shiny and you can see them anyway. I'm a girl. This is natural. Okay, the reality of a designer's life. I'm a self self taught um, in terms of crochet, not in terms of crochet. I'm self taught in terms of designing items, garments. Um, so anybody that's a long term viewer, you will know that I learnt to crochet when I was about 21, 22. I'm now 28, almost 29, um, so I have had a hook in my hand for a long, long time. I was taught by my grandmother, she taught me the basics of granny squares, I'm never far away from a granny square, um, I have tons and tons and tons of these everywhere. And from there I went on to try different stitches, but I always stuck to blankets, um, I wasn't really aware that crochet was a wearable thing um so i did a lot of blankets if you go and watch my blanket stack um vlog you will see all of the blankets that i still own in my possession that i've made over the years um i have a lot of blankets i've tried a lot of stitches i always come back to the granny square and the treble um so go take a look at that after this so you can see a little bit of hgdc history um, and then from there I started an Instagram account in 2016 because I wanted to connect to more people like yourselves and I found so many of you um, which was absolutely great because although people in my life are appreciative of what I make there's only so many times in a day you can say look at this, look at this, look at this 
um, before they're just a bit like, yeah, you showed me that two minutes ago. Um, so I needed lots of yarny people that could appreciate what I'm doing and to inspire me, um, that was really, really important. So I had a blog for a little while, I then took to YouTube. The blog is no more, but YouTube is going strong. Um, I love how on YouTube I can connect with you all. So um, there's lots of commenting, um, then I find you on social media and there's lots of interaction. Hopefully there's gonna be meetups because I'm going to Yarndale in September and a few other um, yarn festivals that I want to go to. So it's bringing more crochet into my real life, day to day life. And the community is great and it's so supportive. And anyway, I've said all of that a million times, but I really do love this community. So I made lots and lots of blankets and it wasn't until the last couple of years um, I taught myself how to knit. My grandma had shown me the basics before, but I never took to it. Crochet has always been my love and I decided I wanted to make socks. So I made, as my first ever knitted project, a two at a time toe up socks with contrasting cuffs, toes and heels. Like, that's crazy, but I did it and it was so much fun. And from there I wanted more and more items that I could wear. Um, last Christmas, so it was only last year that I taught myself how to make socks. And I think I've got four or five pairs. Um, and I've started designing my own sock patterns. But anyway, I move on too fast. I um, made crochet socks following a pattern for everybody at Christmas. Um, and from there, I just really wanted to expand into more crocheted items of clothing. Um, it's not something that was really ever on my radar, but thanks to Instagram and thanks to YouTube, seeing other people's blogs, I realised that crochet is totally wearable and it really fits in with my whole um, sustainability, minimalism, though I know that's a slight contradiction of minimalism. <laughs> But it fits in with um, slow fashion, making things for yourself, um, the whole sort of ethos that is just really calling to me at the moment. So I made a knitted jumper. I made my oversized Eat Me Blog jumper, which you've seen numerous million times. Um, that was the first ever like garment knitted pattern I followed other than socks. Um, and then from there, I sort of got a comprehension of how garments are put together. And because that was knitted in my head, I translated it to how I would do it if I was crocheting. And then um, I started designing a few items, which are down here to show you. And in terms of actual crochet patterns, I have followed and made one. And that is the amazing Boho Fringe Cardi by at made by hem on Instagram and I did that earlier this year in June and it's now August so two months ago I made my first ever crochet garment like following somebody else's pattern um, so other than that everything else that I'm producing is entirely self-taught I don't have a lot of experience in the garment construction um, I sort of just wing it and today I wanted to bring to you the reality of being a self-confessed, self-labelled crochet designer. Um, I mean, can I call myself that? I call myself that. That's what I want to be. That's why at HG Designs Crochet is called what it's called, because that's what I've always wanted to do. Um, and I am in the process of getting ready to release my first pattern for testing. So I think I'm a crochet designer. Um, but it sounds really, really glam and there's so many people on Instagram that would release patterns and I'd think I could never do that. Look at that, it looks amazing, it looks flawless, it looks like it just flew off their hook um, and I just wanted to bring some of the reality of that to you, sort of a behind the scenes keep it real. Um, anyone that does follow me on Instagram at HG Designs Crochet, I posted yesterday um, about real talk and I just said that Hannah from um, at Hey J Yarns had talked to YouTube just to say about how 
social media can be quite um, unrealistic for people in that you will compare yourself to their highlight reel. So on Instagram, most people post their best bits about their life. Um, it's all positive, happy, you know, amazing stuff. And that is why we usually take to social media because it's such a good place to be. For me, I find it really inspiring, really motivating, really empowering. But Hannah is right in that we don't really post about the bad bits in our life, the negative bits. And it's so easy to get drawn into comparison and thinking you're not good enough. So I just really wanted to touch on that because um, I don't want people to feel like that. Um, and so I just posted on there saying that, yes, I have an amazing blessed life and I love my life and I'm so happy and I'm so grateful and I know my purpose and my plans and I know what I'm working towards and every day I make progress and I thank God and his universe like I am blessed I know I am but equally on the other side you you don't get to see or I don't really show all of the negative stuff I don't I don't really show the crippling anxiety panic attacks that I have or the nightmares or the self-doubt or the fear or the frustration with myself and although I know not to compare myself sometimes when I do go onto social media I'm a personal Facebook and see that everyone's getting engaged and having babies and then there's just me over here you you can get sucked into that and I don't want other people to do that based off what I'm doing mental health affects us all and I have definitely had and still have my battles with my own mental health and crochet and HGDC were sort of born from that because it helps me so so much um, and I've sort of touched upon it here and there but if it's going to be of benefit or if people want to hear that story then I'm more than happy to share it so that others realise that feeling like this is normal, that it's okay not to be okay, that sometimes you will spend hours going over and over stuff. Why did this happen? What if this happens? What if that happens? What about if this happens? Am I not good enough? And just on and on and on. If it's gonna be beneficial, if it's gonna help people, I'm more than happy to do a vlog on mental health and crochet because without crochet, I wouldn't be who I am or where I am now and I wouldn't be this happy person that you see and there'd be a whole lot more of the unhappy Heather that has been happening in the background so I just want to say that it happens to us all and we all have ongoing things and that's okay we are all fighting our own struggles we all have our own battles we're all overcoming our own different things and the same things and that we're all in it together that's why i post such motivational stuff on my instagram just as much for myself as anybody else because that's somewhere that i draw strength from that i find inspiring that i know i can connect to people that are just amazing and like-minded um so yeah the reality is as a crochet designer that there's loads of amazing stuff that i post all over my social media like as a design is um, coming along and you're seeing it grow so you sketch it out and then as you're as you're making it it comes to life that's amazing like that came from my head I've put it together I worked out the maths and all of that I did all of that and I post about colour selections and buying more yarn and I can't wait to show you all what I've been up to but equally there is a lot of, not so much negative, just not highlight, highlight real worthy stuff. Um, so for example, at the moment I'm working on Enamoured, which um, is my first design I'm planning to release um, by myself. Enamoured is a crochet granny square jacket that I designed um, a few vlogs back I 
said to you all that I had a disappointment and a pattern that I had worked on I wouldn't be able to release and so I took to my hook um, crochet is something I find incredibly healing and something that I turn to daily and that really is a huge support when I'm struggling with my mind or anything going on in real life um, and so I started to make a granny square and I made a giant granny square and as I've said I've got granny squares everywhere I don't need any more so I decided that I was going to make it something that I could wear so this is the giant granny square and as you will notice is no longer part of the jacket and when I showed you the jacket I said to you I wanted to make the front pure navy um, I was going to amend the sleeves slightly the fronts needed to match up with the hemline um, I think that was it. There were relatively simple alterations, um, but the reality of that is, is that I spent a week deciding whether I should buy that yarn or not, because I put myself on a self-imposed yarn ban. So I decided I wasn't going to buy it, I was just going to stick with it, but it was just bugging me. So, I think Thursday? No. Sunday? No. Maybe Thursday. I've put two yarn orders in this week. I think the first one was Thursday. And I brought um, two balls of navy so that I could do the front. And when it got here, I did take some footage. Yarn delivery, paint box yarns, two navy balls of DK so that I can get this enamored design finished. Um, yes, so I got the navy to do redo the fronts um, and then the sleeves need working on. So I was hoping that I would get this done lickety split, no trouble at all and I'd be able to show you a finished garment. I was second guessing myself um, so I delayed the yarn order. When the yarn order got here I had real life stuff going on, relationship stuff, blah, 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 blah. And I haven't really touched a crochet much this weekend. And when I did do it, I made the fronts no problem. Um, and then it took me over an hour to unseam enamoured. An hour. Because I'd seamed it in navy. All the outer edges in navy. And I didn't want to snip this. Um, and I'd sewed it up so well that it took me that long to undo two side sleeve, uh, seams, two sleeves and across the yoke. Which is great because I'm not going to worry about this falling apart when I'm wearing it. Um, obviously I must do my job really well but... And it was getting later and later into the night. Um, and usually when I get frustrated with a project I just think... Nah, can't be bothered. And I, do, I start something else. But... I want to give this pattern to you guys so much, so I'm persevering. Um, so yes, reality guys, it's okay if you don't make as much progress as you'd like to because that's life and the process of doing this is just as much fun as the completed item. The completed item is the best bit but I'm learning so much in doing all of this um, and every step is a learning curve and gives me more experience and means that I've got more to put into these. Um, so yes, enamoured is in pieces. Um, I do have pieces to show you though. I haven't even started redoing the sleeves um, so I did say to you and I haven't actually undone the full sleeve on this one either so it took me over an hour to do two side sleeve sleeves two side seams you try saying that two side seams two side seams it took me over an hour to do undo two side seams one sleeve and two yokes uh, anyway obviously i left this because i wanted to show you the design fault i don't like obs i don't like how you can see the navy up there it looks like Frankenstein's neck or bolts. I, I just, so that needs to come apart and I'm gonna do um, 
I'm going to do the cuff with a little bit more, um, with some double knit, double knit, double crochet, sorry guys, some double crochets there just to make it a bit more sturdier. Um, and I've decided that I'm going to do this bit in the round, but this bit's going to stay flat. Um, and as I'm going to come on to sleeves, the reality of sleeves, these are a pain. Um, so yeah, that's what the sleeve looked like before I sewed it up. Um, that bit is still together. I think I did that bit in the round to be honest because I couldn't get it undone. Um, oh, it looks so pretty. Okay, where are the fronts? Um, ooh, they're in a project bag because I was working on them. Maybe they're in here. I think they're in my bag. It went to church with me. That's right. Let me just grab the fronts. Maybe they're in the car. They're definitely not in the car. Well, anyway. These are the old fronts. Um, which, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Any suggestions? I've got two of these. I'm probably going to frog them down and make more scrap balls out of them. Unless I make a cushion out of it. Um, I wanted to make a MacBook case, but it's too big for my MacBook. So, cushion, frog it. Undecided. I might hang one of them on my wall. Mm. Well, anyway, the fronts I said to you I wanted to redesign because I'm not happy with um, the front in that. So my, I showed this design to my grandmother and my mother, both really good critics. So if you want them to like if you're going to put something out in the world then and you want to be sure that it's good then show these two people because they will definitely point out I think that could be improved that could be tweaked so I showed them and, and neither of them were happy with the center of the granny rectangle because they said the spacing and the gaping just doesn't look right and i mean i agree it doesn't but it doesn't offend me but it is a little bit unsightly so i did at first, I was going to make, um, I tried doing it in a slightly smaller hook. I tried slip stitching to stop it gaping. Again, reality of designing. It was just lots of trial and error. Um, just keep trying things and if it's not right, start again. Which can be frustrating because then I get to the end of the week and all I can show you is um, videos of me frogging things. But... <laughs> Uh, you've got to get it right so that's the way it goes um, but actually what I've decided to do is I did three little granny squares um, three three round granny squares which I joined as I went and I've then um, granny striped around it in a rectangle to make it the, the length I like I would that I need um, again I was really really happy because when I took this apart I thought they were the right length and what I'd been doing is just lie, laying out the jacket flat and then putting the granny, the, the front panel, on top. And it was like, yeah, yeah, that fits. And then I took it apart and actually laid the granny square flat. I measured them both and the fronts are three inches too short because I should have used a measuring tape in the first place. Um, but usually I'm crocheting in bed so I don't put anything out flat properly to measure it. And I mean, I've got all the, the measurements in my journal, but anyway so I do actually need to add a couple more rows to the bottom of the front once I've located them um, it's not in my bag I think it might be out in the car so you can see them next time um, if you're on patreon you would have seen pictures go up anyway because I've been putting updates on there so the fronts have been redesigned the sleeve <sighs> I'm telling you guys if it weren't for the fact that I'd showed you this not the pattern 
this would be in a time out in a bag hidden away and I'd be making something else because the reality is is I enjoy the simpler projects that give you instant gratification and undoing work that you've already done for the fourth or fifth time is not fun um but anyway persevering it's going to be worth it and I am enjoying it I just I'm looking forward to getting this done now and moving on to other projects because as a creative you always have so many more ideas and the more creativity I use up the more ideas are coming to me. I woke up on Saturday morning and I got out of bed, grabbed my journal and I drew out five or six different design ideas in here, three of which are wearable items and one of which I ordered the yarn for on Sunday morning so and yes I know I'm not supposed to be buying more yarn but I decided if it's actually towards a design, like legit a design, not just me saying, oh, I'll make something and show this on the vlog, then I can get it. And also my grandma wanted some cotton yarn from Wool Warehouse um, and it was like six pound and she would have had to pay postage. So I thought, I know, I'll spend 20 pounds to save her two pound 75 postage that makes sense <laughs> so I bought some double knit for a design that's in here um, spoiler alert it's for like a shawl slash scarf which I'm really really excited about um, so yes as I was saying and distracting myself the more creativity I use up the more that comes to me so um, honestly before I would think, oh, I'm not going to post about this this idea. I'm not going to talk about this. I don't want to show anyone. I don't want anyone to get it. Or I need to save up some of the good ones. No, if you've got ideas and you want to work on them, get them out, write them down, and work on the ones that really, really show up to you. Because more and more will come to you, I promise. Um, I was just trying to see. I don't... I can't show you my sketches because some of them are just awful. <laughs> And I want them, some of them to be surprises for you because I've got sort of seasonal things lined up. But um, I promise you there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six different designs I put in here um, at half seven on a Saturday morning. So yes, I... I've also been working on the granny stripe um, version of Enamoured that again, reality check, started out as me being frustrated with Enamoured because I knew that I needed to take it apart, um, that I was going to have to order more yarn, that I had sleeves to remake and I didn't really want to so I started another project because I told you like that's what I do. That is why there's so much yarn and so many whips around me. Um, so I started the granny stripe one and I used my scrap yarn using a HGDC scrap yarn ball. The HGDC scrap ball challenge. Um, which is great because some of you have been tagging this on Instagram and I love that. I love getting the um, notifications that you've tagged me and I love searching the hashtag and seeing new entries. So if you make a scrap ball cake like this, um, which I show you how to do in my vlog, and the link's somewhere here, and it's also got its own playlist. Um, anytime that I've mentioned projects in the HGDC scrap ball challenge, it's got its own playlist. You can go through, get loads of ideas. Um, so yes, get tagging. I have made the back panel, which was to Oh gosh. And I made it ever so slightly bigger. Oh no, they're not too bad. Yay! Me go me for measuring. I actually um measured this and then worked out from here how many clusters I needed and actually changed the right amount rather than just guesstimating and creating more work for myself. Um, so I've done the stripey back 
And then I did two chest pieces really, really quickly. So there's one, it's got scrap yarn on it. And I used um, these because I knew I was gonna change these. As I said, they were too wide. I used them to work out exactly what size I was going to need and the length. Um, but since then, I've changed my mind. Reality of designing, I'm in control. I get to choose what I want to do. But it's also frustrating when you get that brainwave after you've done something. So I churned out two fronts and I decided I don't want them to be in the granny rectangle. One, because I don't really like this centre bit, which I have took out of enamoured. Um, I want it to be stripes because this is stripy and I like matchy matchy. So this is going to be granny stripe. Um, Christine did mention on yesterday's vlog, because I have been replying to all your comments because it's so much fun. Um, Christine, you said to me that you would, rather than wearing that that way, you'd wear it that way because um, striping, you need to wear it the right way to flatter your own body, um, which is fine because this is supposed to be a square, so you, that would be fine in terms of turning it around, no problem. But it does mean that when I make these into stripes, I'm going to have to give the measurements for you to do it horizontally and vertically. Um, I'm going to make mine going that way. Or am I? That was my original plan for it to be like that. So I think I'm going to make my fronts like that. But then I'm going to also give the measurements so that, that you can go that way as well. Um, now, I'm just working this through. I started on a sleeve um, and as I was saying, sleeves are a pain in the butt. All my designs have sleeves on and I've, I've come to a very, really real, a very real and very early realization. I don't like sleeves. Um, so here's some of the, here's the ones I tried earlier and wasn't happy with. I decided in the end that working in the round wasn't working for me because um, this bit here, when I do it in the round, it comes up completely different and it was too big um, and I had all of the measurements and everything worked out on the enamoured sleeves and um, it was fine on this bit for that to be in the round because then it hides the multicoloured but for this bit I need to do it flat because they actually hide the fact that I've um, stuck in increases. You can't actually tell looking at that whereas if you do it in the round it's very obvious because you've got additional clusters where it's they they shouldn't be. Um, so I've worked out how I'm going to do the sleeves after spending two or three evenings with lots of rejected attempts like that that all need frogging. Um, might have to give a pile of this to my dad and just say here you go have fun undo all of this and make balls because I'm sick of frogging things <laughs> that needs frogging. So let's just show you the li all of this needs frogging um there's another front to be frogged if i don't make these into a cushion they need frogging i might just make this my screenshot for um the actual podcast and call this the realities of designing frogging Um, and that's all my hard work and all my evenings gone into that and then I'm gonna have to sit there and unwind it but never mind so the sleeves for this is all of the yarn for this scrap one at the moment oh here's the other front <laughs> okay I seem to not be doing very well in terms of 
Where are the sleeves? Okay, try panic over. I am um, just a little another reality thing of being a amazing crochet designer like me. I stripped my bed this morning and amongst my um, bed sheets, I've managed to pull off the crochet that I've been working on in the night and all the missing pieces were wrapped up in a bundle and luckily I've not put them in the wash yet. So, <laughs> oh dear. Um, this is the front for an Amid, which I appreciate just looks like a navy rectangle. Um, if we get up close, can you see one, two, three granny squares and then I've just gone round and round and round them. I love this colour. Paint, bo paint box yarns, um, I brought this to make a blanket last year and it was leftovers and I thought, well, I did have enough off my measurements for making an amid, but I was obviously decided to make the fronts pure navy. Um, so there's two of them now, the fronts. I just need to add another, um, I think it was another two rows on either end to, to get the length I want, but anyway. You can only get paint box yarns from Love Crochet or Love Knitting. And the reason I was procrastinating so much about buying it is because the yarn was something like four pounds, but then postage was three. And it really, really, really annoys me to buy a postage, uh, pay for postage, but there wasn't anything else at that point that I wanted to order. And the stuff that my grandma wanted to order wasn't available on Love Crochet. Um, and so the three pound was just too much, but I've given in, I've brought it, and I do love their yarn. It is so soft, it is so fluffy, and I would buy more of it. So um, maybe once I've figured out a few more of my design ideas, I will buy some of this in bulk so that I don't have to pay postage. Does anyone else get annoyed by postage? It really bothers me, and you can't buy this in a shop anywhere. Otherwise, I would have drove to a yarn shop and just purchased it. So that's the fronts of Enamid, um, which I have found. Phew. And then as I was saying, for the sleeves for um, the stripy version of Enamid, which we're gonna have to go through the whole rigmarole of the naming as well. Um, but anyway, let's carry on with the sleeves. I decided I wanted elbow patches because Artie, <sighs> gave me this idea um, and I don't even know if he watches these anymore but thank you for the idea thank you thank you thank you um, so he gave me the idea of elbow patches and I started it guys look at the ends oh my gosh um, so I've done the first bit flat and I actually I've started to sew it up there I figured if you leave a long enough bit of tail you've got enough to um, single crochet it together and then I've done all of that flat which actually I now know I could have done in the round um, and then I've added in the elbow patch I've actually started the elbow patch a little bit too late. I need to go back and start it down here so that it's actually either side of my elbow, whereas I'd waited to hit my elbow. Um, but you guys, that ends. Oh my God. It's gonna be worth it though, because that is gonna look insane in the game. So the, the back's gonna be popping and then you're gonna have that on the back of your elbows as well, um, which, this is also definitely a design that can go in the party in the back collection. Um, which I know some of you love that name. So yeah, um, I've got stitch markers. Well, I've got one. I, I think I tied a bit of waste yarn on the other side because I couldn't be bothered to get up um, and get another stitch marker, though I have trillions. So I've got the one I made myself, my HG one. Um, and again, it's just trial and error, so I I put on about three rows and I actually ripped it back because it was too wide. I've gone back and redone it um, and I'm going to rip that back and start a little bit further down. But what do you think? It's going to have elbow patches. So as I was saying, 
it's going to need naming and I did a little bit of brainstorming in my journal um, my bullet journal with some name ideas let's see if we can find it um, so I've got patched I've got and what I do is once I've thought of one word that springs to mind or I put down my buzzwords and I go on Google and I look at the synonyms and see what other words come up so then I've got enforcement reinforced I've got bandage plasters darned scraps cobbled repaired mend strengthen toughen enhance brace fortify regenerate in spirit which I do really like in spirit or in spirited um, in hearten, embolden, energize. So I'm still not sure yet, but I can show you this page. Um, this is this is how basic my drawing is. Oh gosh, back panel stripey, front panels stripey, sleeves with elbow bits, and then it's got um, HDDC scrapboard challenge project. I've got a little notes for myself of things I need to do and I've got here is a list of all of the words <laughs> um, and then I didn't even leave a page after normally I leave a page after so that I'll be able to put in um, stuff about sleeves sewing it together so but it's okay because this bit of the page here has just got a little bit of information underneath there but all of that is free so I'll probably just put it there um, but if anyone's interested in my bullet in my journal setup then you can go back to my vlogs where I've shown them um, I probably need to do an update because how I used to use it is so different so before I used to put in like a monthly overview I don't think any of this is showing up nor am I sure if I want to show you all of this but anyway, I used to have a monthly overview. I used to have trackers of like um, whether I'd put my hair away for bed, took my vitamins, if I'd put a blog post, if I'd been to the gym. And then I used to break it down and have weekly ones as well. And they just didn't get used. So a lot of them are empty and it just seemed pointless putting them up it to not get used it's completely blank um, so I've modified that now and I and all I do now I do really like this bit though and still I love sticking things in all I do now is um, every Sunday when I'm due to record or Saturday I do what's called um, a weekly review and I've been putting on them Come on. All I put is, so I put vlogging to do, life admin to do, pattern releases to do, project focus, and then some stuff for my um, day life, day life, corporate career that I do on in the day, um, and then I've got a little bit of next week things to remember. Um, and then I just write my list and I just tick them off and that that works for me and that's plenty of space and really focused. In terms of appointments and things like that, it all goes in my phone and it syncs with my work calendar and things. So I don't need it in here. Um, it's got the sermons from church, it's got um, things for patterns. So this is Enamid scrolls that I need to neaten up and finish. Um, it's got bits and pieces from books that I'm reading that I might want to jot down. Um, it's got the designs I made the other day. Yeah, so everything's in my journal. Um, that goes everywhere and the reality is that with, if I lost that, I might actually take pictures of some of those pages because if I lose that, I will lose. Oh, enamoured, I would lose. I don't know whether to call this one inspirited or not. Um, I need to really sit down and work out what it is that this one means for me. Um, but I think I am leaning towards inspirited. Um, enamoured and inspirited. 
Then the other design that I'm working on, and a reality of my life as a designer anyway, is I have lots of projects I pick up and then I put down. And this one, I know a lot of you have eagerly been awaiting. And I kept saying to you, as soon as the weather changes, as soon as the weather changes, there's a big window behind you now. The weather's changed, winter's coming. Um, and so I'm bringing back this pattern to finish and get out there. Any guesses which one? I actually, you know, putting it away for a while and coming back to it. I can't believe I designed this. I love it. So this is my granny square jumper. Granny squares for the win. Oh my goodness, look at it. I'm so proud of this. Okay, so I don't think I've shown you this since mm, April, May. Because I remember as the heat started to kick in, I was sat out on Artie's balcony trying to sew this together with double with a double knit jumper sat on me in, in 25 degree heat it just wasn't happening so when you last saw it I think I was in the process of taking this apart because the way I'd put it together was not bringing the pattern together in the way that I had envisaged in the way in which I've designed it um, and so I took it apart and now the front and the back and the two sleeves I've, have been um, put together. I've only seamed one sleeve. This sleeve at the moment is held together by scrap yarn which is how I um, put my seams together when I'm sewing it up just so that the, that the ends, that the edges match up. I just use um, bits of scrap yarn looped through. Um, I don't know what other people use. I know that you can get fancy like peg stitch markers and all sorts. Scrap yarn's fine and I've got loads of that. Um, and then it's gonna need a neck band and some ribbing. And this, then this is actually done. Um, I knit the rib on this. So I'm probably gonna make another one with crochet ribs so that any of you that only crochet can also have the ribbing effect. Because when I crochet ribbed on artist cardigan I was amazed it was great so to my granny granny square jumper that I am working on it's a bit musty um I can't wait I can't wait this is amazing look at it so that guys as soon as enamored inspirited are finished then this one is going to get my love um, and it needs a name as well the granny square jumper needs a name so I'm going to sit with my journal and put all my buzzwords down if you've got any suggestions I love getting your suggestions put them down there for me this was actually the first crochet garment that I started working on for myself um, so I finished that oversized jumper that I knitted and I started making myself this um, so I've got to hand it to myself when I pick a challenge I pick big ones um, and I want you lot to realize that if you have a design in your head just because you don't have the experience or just because you're not quite sure how you're going to bring it together doesn't mean that you can't do it it means that you're just going to have to persevere and as you go along you will learn so much um, I have learned a lot doing this jumper and also I have this so this jumper really gave me my spark for designing um, so this is always going to be important this made me realize how much how much joy I get from it and it really did light up my soul um, and it was and as usual I've used granny squares so I think granny squares is my reoccurring thing because if you remember the, the bag that I made myself, the lined pouch, that's granny squares as well. So this needs a name. It's definitely gonna be something along the lines of inspiration or something like that. Um, so at some point you're gonna see the granny square jumper, inspirited and enamoured, completed. So the realities of a designer, 
I have got so much work to do. It can feel slightly overwhelming, but also I'm just really, really enjoying it. Um, I'm really, really learning how to discipline myself, how to focus myself. Um, it's, this last year has been mega. If you think that the first knitted garment I made myself was a pair of socks last year, and then November I made myself, I started knitting the oversized jumper. I seamed it all up and finished it in February um, and was absolutely blown away by it. I started this. This took me up to May. The heat wave kicked in and then I started on the droplet jumper, which I'm still working on. Um, and then I also worked on the summer dusk shawl, which I won't be releasing. Um, that was that was born in my journal I can show you that one I whilst I was at work I quickly sketched an idea that came into my head and can you see and from that the summer dusk shawl was born and then that led to a disappointment, which led to enamoured, which has led to inspirited, which means I want to pick this back up. So the reality of a crochet designer is that it isn't all glam, but it's so much fun. Um, I am definitely, sometimes I feel like I'm just feeling my way through a dark room with this. Um, but that's fine because there's so many people out there that do, that do want to help and that can help. Um, I might have a slight problem with a sleeve, but there's a designer out there that is willing to reach out and help, and that's great. Um, and it also, like, it's just so much fun, guys. It's so much fun. <laughs> um, I hope you realise that I'm just an average person doing what it is that sets my soul on fire. And if you lot want to do anything like this, or if there's something else in your life that you really want to do, then just do it. Um, don't compare yourself, don't worry about not being prepared, just do it and have fun with it. So I'm going to end this here. I hope it wasn't too rabbity um, that you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. That there's a lot of things that go on in the background in people's lives. Um, and comparison isn't helpful. Empowering each other is what it's all about. So you lot empower me and you make me feel supported and I want to give that back um, and the reality is that this can be daunting, it can be overwhelming um, sometimes I get really anxious about letting you down or not doing the best that I can um, and then you just have to put that to one side sometimes, like when I was making this I kept saying, I think it's going to look rubbish, I think it's going to look rubbish and Artie said to me, just carry on babe, it looks good it came into your mind just see it through and if it is rubbish then frog it because you frog so much stuff anyway and he he's right so I, I persevered and I actually really like it so you just need to take that first step keep stepping forward and put your doubts to one side and carry on um, and if you do that then you'll get to have fun like me make lots of amazing things or do whatever it is that's calling to you so thank you so much for watching um i will see you again in a week's time with another update if you want real-time updates head over to patreon and support the hddc tribe and i will see you soon happy making